Good evening. Sunday began with the terrible news that five soldiers, including a colonel and a major, gave their lives while trying to rescue civilians in a hostage situation in Hanwara and Kashmir. And later in the day, the armed forces continued to be in the headlines as a number of fly casts and other such events were done to try and encourage medical workers fighting against COVID. So we saw Sukhoi's flying over Mumbai and helicopters showering rose petals and so on and so forth. But attention today was also on the continuing plight of migrants as the announcement came that special trains would be run to take migrants back home after, after screening them, point-to-point -point trains and then the possibility of quarantine at the destination when they finally reach there. But the one big question that was swirling around the country today was who's going to actually be paying for these trains, who's going to be paying for the tickets? The notification makes it sound as if the passengers are going to have to pay for it. But there was some clarification that maybe the state governments would pay. Because at the end of the day, these migrants have really, really had a rough time in the last 40 days. Perhaps these trains could have been done earlier. But certainly, we shouldn't at this point be expecting them to Trump somehow, somehow find the money to pay to get home. Here are all the big stories today. A colonel, major and two jawans of the Indian Army along with a sub-inspector of Jammu and Kashmir police were killed in an encounter with militants in North Kashmir's Handwara on Sunday. Based on intelligence inputs that terrorists were taking the civilians hostage, a joint operation was launched by the Army and the Jammu and Kashmir police. Civilians were successfully extricated after an eight-hour-long intense gun battle. The Army said two terrorists were eliminated. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday paid tributes to five security personnel who were killed in a fierce gun battle with two militants in Jammu and Kashmir's Handwara police district. In a tweet, the Prime Minister said their valour and sacrifice will never be forgotten. He said the five security personnel served the nation with utmost dedication and worked tirelessly to protect the citizens. He offered condolences to their families and friends. The Indian Air Force, Army and Navy joined hands today to express their gratitude to healthcare workers, police and forces at the front lines of the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic to show their support to COVID-19 warriors, fly pass, lit up ships and musical tributes by army bands outside hospitals took place across the country. The Indian Air Force choppers showered flower petals on Delhi's LNJP Hospital, RML Hospital and aims to express solidarity to healthcare workers. Flower petals were showered over over several hospitals treating COVID-19 patients across the country. The Indian Air Force's Su-30 MKI fighter aircraft also performed an aerial salute over Guwahati in Assam and Rajpath in Delhi. Representatives of Tri-Service Chiefs paid tribute at National Police Memorial in Delhi. The Navy also joined in. The INS Jalashwa in the Bay of Bengal saluted doctors, nurses and other health workers, sanitation staff and police personnel fighting the pandemic. The Indian Army Band performed outside the Panchkula Hospital in Haryana to express solidarity. The headquarters of the Central Reserve Police Force has been sealed after a personal staff member of a senior officer tested positive for the novel coronavirus. Officials working in the building will not be allowed inside the premises from Sunday. CRPF authorities have informed the district surveillance officer for initiating required protocols as per medical guidelines for time-bound proper sealing of the building located in the CGO complex on Lodi Road. A contact tracing exercise has begun of all the personnel who came into contact with the staffer at the headquarter building. Unlike other hotspots of the country where private offices have been allowed to function at 33% strength, such offices will not be allowed to resume operations in Mumbai and Pune. The Maharashtra government has decided to create a separate category for Mumbai and Pune metropolitan regions that fall within the red zone category which will have more stringent restrictions than other red zone districts in the state. The state will follow all other guidelines set by the centre in its plan for easing the lockdown. Maharashtra is the worst affected state in the country, with over 12,000 cases and 500 deaths. The first special train for Uttar Pradesh carrying more than 800 migrant workers who were stranded in Maharashtra reached Lucknow on Sunday, ending a long wait for many labourers since the nationwide lockdown began over a month ago. 
The railways is running shramik special trains to move migrant workers, pilgrims, tourists, students and others stranded in various parts of the country since March 25th. Meanwhile, nearly 500 students stranded at coaching hub Kota in Rajasthan during the lockdown also reached Delhi in 40 buses early on Sunday morning. The students would be sent to their homes after medical tests. The centre is likely to cap its overall spending on coronavirus-related relief at around 4.5 trillion rupees or about $6 billion due to concerns that excess spending could trigger a sovereign rating downgrade, according to a Reuters report. On Tuesday, rating agency Fitch warned that India's sovereign rating could come under pressure if its fiscal outlook deteriorates further. Both Fitch and SP have pegged India at an investment-grade rating that is a notch above a junk rating. The government's new stimulus plans are likely to be aimed at helping people who have lost their jobs along with small and large companies. Mohammad Shami may be a regular for Team India in all three formats of the game, but things were different a couple of years ago. During a live chat on Instagram with teammate Rohit Sharma, Shami said that when he got injured during the 2015 World Cup, it took him 18 months to fully recover. That was the most stressful period of his life. He added that when he started playing again, he went through some personal issues during which, had his family not supported him, he wouldn't have made it. Shami further added that he thought of committing suicide three times during that phase. Shami's wife had accused him of domestic violence and match-fixing in 2018, due to which his central contract was put on hold. The fast bowler was later given a clean shit by the BCCI. Recounting his experience with COVID-19, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said doctors treating him were prepared to announce his death after he was taken to intensive care. Johnson was quoted by The Sun on Sunday newspaper in an interview that there was a strategy to deal with a death of Stalin type scenario. The UK Prime Minister said he was not in particularly brilliant shape and was aware that there were contingency plans in place. The Conservative Party leader spent three days receiving oxygen support and he was discharged on April 12th.